greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Brother Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It is time to talk about D20 Modern, the modern take on the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. So let's talk about what we were at. We were talking about some basics of combat. Let's dive into it even more. Defense. The defense of most things starts out around 10. 10 represents the defense of a civilian, someone you just meet on the street. Your defensive score is going to be equal to 10, plus or minus your dexterity modifier, plus your equipment modifier, plus your class modifier, plus your size. Each of these is sort of going to be a variable. Your dexterity modifier, as I said, if it's a bonus, you're going to be applying it. If it's a penalty, you will also apply it. Your equipment is to depend on what kind of armor or shields or whatever you're buying that adds equipment. Your class and level will give you a defensive bonus that you're going to have. And if you have a size different than a normal human's, by whatever reason, you're going to have a different defense. There are other modifiers that can be added to defense. There's, of course, natural armor if you're some kind of creature with tough skin or tough scales. It could be something like a feat that would grant you a bonus. It could be a dodge modifier, which any kind of dodge modifiers you have are the only modifiers that stack. So if you hear one of those, it's stacking. Or it could be some kind of magical modifier if magic exists in your world, which it very well might. It's going to depend on what world you're playing in, if you're playing in a realistic one or one that would have some magic. Now, there might be a time where you're not adding your dexterity bonus or penalty to your defense that's when you're flat-footed when you're basically leaving yourself open and unaware of something and the same there could be a touch attack which you don't get your armor or equipment bonus to your defenses because they're just trying to touch you now let's talk about movement a little bit more movement is of course going to depend on what kind of creature you and i talked a little bit about the generals of humans there is another kind of action you can do. You could take your full round and you could run. Running, you have to do it in a straight line. You move two, four times your speed. You just run straight forward. That is going to take up your entire turn. It's going to be a full round. Now, let's dive more into saves. Saves are going to be based on a couple of things. It's going to be based on your ability score and whatever class you are and what level you are in that class. Your level and your class will give you a number that is going to be added to your saves, which are the three different types of saves, and then your ability score for each of those will add to those. Fortitude is constitution, reflex is dexterity, and will is wisdom. You will add the modifiers of each of those to what you're get for those saves. You'll roll a d20, add that in. The defense or the number you're supposed to target depends on whatever you kind of number you're supposed to be getting, you're supposed to be defending on against. It's whatever you're trying to get is the number you're trying to roll that d20, add your bonus to to get it. If you roll the one, you're automatically failing. Rolling a 20, you're automatically succeeding. Fortitude is, as I said, is going to be based on your constitution. It's all about your tough body, your ability to, you know, absorb some kind of effect to you. It's about your physicalness. Reflex, which I said is dexterity. It's all about your ability to sort of avoid, physically avoid some kind of trouble that you're getting into, to move out of the way at the right second. Will, which is based on your wisdom, is all about your mental fortitude to resist some kind of influence on your mind. Now, as I talked about, initiative is going to be a d20 roll, which you're adding your dexterity modifier to and any kind of other bonuses you might have from a feat or from a class. You're going to arrange yourselves from highest to lowest, and you're going to move in that action highest to lowest. And every turn, everybody's going to go from highest to lowest. When you're rolling initiative, it should be some kind of tie. First, you look to the modifiers. Whoever has the higher modifier goes first before the other person. If that's again tied, you roll off again and see who gets higher. And you keep rolling off until you get some kind of order that you've got. And there could be things that can change your initiative in your round, certain actions that you do, or certain things that are going to alter this. But generally speaking, the way your initiative is set up at the beginning of the fight is the way that the fight goes. Now, when we're talking about surprise, surprise is going to be effective at the beginning of a combat. Surprise is going to be determined usually by some kind of either listen or spot that you're going to use to perceive your opponent and understand that they're there. Traditionally, one side might already be aware of it, another side you might be already aware of it. Your GM is going to determine how the basic awareness starts out if everybody's trying to surprise each other, if one person already has the upper hand, if the other person already has the upper hand, and there might be some checks on the other side to see who may notice things extra that would not normally be aware. Let's say like you're, these people are trying to surprise your group here. You might have a check to see if they're able to successfully surprise you. If you get the uh, opportunity to surprise you, then they get to act on that first round and either get a stand order or a move to sort of get in the surprise. Anybody that acts during that first round gets that. Otherwise, you're just not going to be acting during that first round. Now, you are flat-footed in any kind of round in normal initiative and a surprise initiative until you act, which means you're sort of opening open yourself up a little bit to attacks because you haven't done anything. 
Now each combat round is six seconds. That's an important thing to think about. Let's dive into the actions about it because I mentioned the actions a little bit before. Let's talk about actions which are equivalent to each of these different ones. Most time to using a skill or a feat is going to be equivalent to an attack action. That they're going to be similar. That if I use some kind of feat specially or use some kind of skill, it's going to be equivalent to it. Equivalent to a move might be climbing a quarter of your speed. It would be dropping or picking up an item. It would be standing up from being prone. Something that would be like a free action, which you are again limited in the number of free actions dependent on what your game master thinks is appropriate and the group kind of has a consensus on. But that would be like saying a couple of sentences that would be dropping prone, just, just dropping something. Something that's very simple to do, like you had to move to pick something up or you had to move to stand up, but you could just drop and drop for free. And again, you are limited by what's kind of going on in the situation and what seems reasonable for you to do in those six seconds while you're doing everything else you're doing. So you might only have a chance to say a little bit. It's going to be up to your GM. So that's it for today. I talked a bit more about combat. I went over a little bit more of all the different basics of combat, went into depths a little bit more about them. I'm going to go into more depths about some of the actions that you can do that I talked about just briefly now and then move into talking about attacks of opportunity more and going a little more in depth about that kind of I just have scratched the surface on a lot of these things I want to give you a little bit more of the chunk of it so that you understand it a little bit more we've gotten the basics down we want a little more of the exact so if you have any questions comments anything you want to say anything you think I left out please leave in the comments below please like share and subscribe to support the channel the empire and the work I do if you want to show some extra support check out my patreon link in the description below but until the next time I bid you farewell